fact that every healthcare system in our country is struggling with rising cost and uneven quality. There are caps, and ironically, we know those. We have people, we have ideas. Healthcare leaders and policy makers have tried countless incremental fixes and taken programs on a mission mode, but none have had great impact. To take the conversation forward and to understand the broader health scenario in the country, we have with us Dr. Vishwas Mehta, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, as a guest of honor. I request Dr. Mehta to please come on the stage and take your place. For, the, for this session, Dr. Vikas Goswami. To please come on the stage. Ms. Seema Mehra from TCS. Thank you. Ms. Laura Donovan from Partners in Change, Chief Executive. Mr. Virain Bhuta, K. Chandrasekhar, Founder and CEO of Forest, uh, Forest Health Limited, thank you all. Ta, our guest of honor. Joined the, joined the Indian Admin, Administrative Service in 1986 in Kerala, Kerala. He has held various positions in the Ministry of Culture and Tourism and Ministry of Defence. Before joining the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare as the Joint Secretary. Apart from all this, he Apart from leading these positions, he is a versatile singer and you can actually YouTube his videos. In fact, we did that. <laughs> so I would request Dr. Vishwas Mehta to please come and enlighten us with his perspectives and share his views. Good afternoon. Eminent personalities on the dais and those participating in this wonderful forum. In fact, I'm sorry that I missed out on the whatever has happened at the pre-lunch session. But somehow I could not resist coming here in between several meetings which are awaiting me after this session. So I'm not sure whether I'll be able to sit through this. But very often what happens in many of these forums Sometimes we are able to participate, sometimes we are not able to, part, able to participate. But then what the government is trying to do or what government initiatives or policies are there, they are some, sometimes are left out. Government by and large is a misunderstood entity because no matter what you do, <laughs> no matter what you do, the, somehow it doesn't reach. And what reaches is not newsworthy. So I, I guess there must be people from media also here. I, throughout my career I have seen that uh, uh, many times when I confronted media with the uh, facts and figures, they said, no, we cannot carry this because it is not sensational. Well, I deal with uh, human resources in health, in, in uh, the Ministry of Health, but primarily I am dealing with the medical education, that is the all the four major regulators, Medical Council of India, Dental Council of India, Nursing Council, and the Pharmacy Council of India. So you can see my hands are full. Dealing with four major regulators who are primarily responsible for the human resources in health sector, each one of them very, very important in their own way, is not an easy task. I just want to give you uh, a broad picture and then we'll talk about 
why what means what csr actually means in terms of uh, what we are trying to do in india we have perhaps the largest number of medical colleges in the world 387 medical colleges <coughs> we produce 50000 graduates mbbs doctors every year out of this about 23000 almost 50% are post graduates the specialists studying through these colleges 387 medical colleges 181 are in the government and you have 206 who are in the private sector the growth in private sector has <laughs> happened in the last one to two decades government was primarily responsible for setting up medical institutions because there were not many people interested after the independence to set up these institutions if you look at dental education in the country we have 306 dental colleges in the country only 41 are in the government the rest a very large number is in the private sector we produce about 25000 dental doctors the number of post graduate seats or the specialist is only about 5000 that makes about 20% of people who specialize in dental education nursing what is the number we don't know because numbers vary there is no authentic documentation 90 95% nursing institutions in the country are run by the private sector state governments have set up nursing colleges nursing schools anm training schools nurse midwifery schools gnm nursing schools all kind of institutions we have a nursing council as a regulator established in 1947 which is primarily responsible for what is happening in the nursing sector if you look at the dental council act that is 1948 if you look at the medical council act mci that is 1956 if you look at the pharmacy council act pci it's also 47 48 vintage most of these regulators of was set up after the independence some acts some regulations have changed but many have not medical council is a hot potato which everybody wants to deal with the politicians the businessmen the bureaucrats the entrepreneurs everybody because everybody wants to become a doctor now i am very sure people who are dealing with health here know that in this country we have only half a doctor for 1000 people 0.5 is the doctor population 0.5 per 1000 is the doctor population ratio what does who say they want one is to 1000 so basically we need 100000 doctors 1 lakh doctors in this country if you look at the track record so far in last 60 65 years having created 387 medical colleges this appears to be an impossible task there is no way that you can reach that magical figure of 1 is to 1000 doctors in near future you cannot unfortunately set up medical colleges the way you can set up an engineering college which like a factory produce engineers every 4 years health is different you have to have a hospital you have to have clinical load you have to have patients you have to have doctors you have to have paramedics allied health professionals you have to have lot of things which support minimum regulations a doctor takes about 7 to 12 years to become a specialist and by the way in india we have it's one of the one of the shortest courses we have all over the world uh, especially in developed countries you find anything between 6 to 8 years or even 9 to 10 years in terms of becoming a doctor if you look around the world how many countries can really boast of the fact that they have enough doctors they don't have most countries don't have the problem of human resources in the world is generally the same our problem is that we are too many people despite having the largest number of medical colleges in the country mental colleges in the country nursing institution in the country we still have 1.2 billion people and this is further compounded by the fact that the distribution of these institutions is is quite uneven 
If you look at the number of medical institutions in the country, it is largely confined to the south, south and the west. Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, these are the states who have more than 65% of the medical colleges. That is perhaps true for the dental as well as for the nursing institutions. Where do we need the doctors? We need it in the north. We need it in UP, Bihar. We need them in the northeast. We need it in Jharkhand. We need it in remote areas and tribal areas where there are no medical institutions. Studies have revealed that wherever there is a medical institution, even if it is not a medical college, even if it's a hospital, it does change the life of people. It does improve the health parameters. Studies have shown that. Now, how do we ensure that the health parameters which we seek in this huge country, we are able to reach the Millennium Development Goals? How do we do that? If we know that next 50 years or 30 years we cannot reach that magical figure of 1 is to 1,000 population. The biggest dilemma for us is if I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, what is the number of doctors available in this country? You will not be able to perhaps answer. You will not be able to give me any figure. How many doctors are available in this country? If you ask Medical Council of India, they also don't know. If you ask Ministry also, I will have to guess. The reason is, MCI will say, as per Indian Medical Register, 850,000 doctors. But this figure is not true, because it's not a live register. Our estimate is about 80% of them may be available in the country. There are multiple registrations, there are people who are dead and gone. There are people who have left this country, settled in US, America, and uh, European countries for better perks. About 6, 6, 6.5 lakhs, 650,000 doctors. That is what says 0.47 per thousand population. If you ask dental doctors, we still do not know because there is no live registers there also. Ask about nursing, they say about 1.3 million, 1.4 million are the registered nurses in India. How many are available? If you ask nursing council, they will say 40 percent. I don't know how they have come to this figure. What happened to this? 60 percent have certainly not left this country. Are they not pursuing nursing profession anymore? Are they doing something else? We don't know. You ask nursing council, they have no answers. Pharmacy, similar situation. We don't know the numbers. Well, numbers become irrelevant in any case because of the problems which we have in terms of reach and accessibility of healthcare in India. The trouble for us in the ministry at the policy level is that whatever numbers they may be, good, bad, correct, incorrect, the problem is that they are not where they are required. As I said, the entire thing concentrated in the South. The unfortunate part is the entire medical education is urban-centric and hospital-centric. It creates doctors only for towns and cities. So even if we assume 650,000 doctors, they are only confined to 5,000 towns and cities. They are not in the villages where, people, where India lives. You have 70% of the population living in 650,000 villages who still do not have access to good health care. And that is the reason that government has, to, has a business to be in the health. Private will always be there, private will always provide good quality services, but it will always happen in the, in the towns and cities. It will always happen in the areas of tertiary care, maximum secondary care. It will not happen in primary care. It will not happen in the public health arena. Second dilemma for us is that the doctors which we produce despite being hospital-centric and urban-centric, are not actually fit to function in the public health arena. If you ask MBBS doctor who passes out from the medical college, he cannot actually help handle a primary health center. You post him there, he actually cannot handle patients because he's not trained enough for that. He's not confident. The only time he actually learns a little bit is during the internship and during the time when he starts doing his PG. We tried some incentives to push these doctors into the rural areas. We have 24,000 PhDs and we produce 50,000. So we forced Medical Council of India, can we do something about 
sending these people to primary health care, health care centers. And since incentives have not worked, MCI came out with a resolution saying, we will make it mandatory for all doctors to have a PHC one year before they can they become eligible for PG. I don't know how many people are from Delhi, but they would have seen last one month, we have been seeing protests on this. We had about 5,000 doctors from three, four medical colleges here, surrounded Nirman Bhavan where we sit. They came and talked to me, they argued with me, and all my efforts to tell them that I belong to Rajasthan, studied in Chandigarh, and worked in Kerala. I also worked in rural areas. There are engineers working in rural areas. There are NGOs working in rural areas. None of this actually cuts nice with them. They won't mind working in a rural area if it is in U.S. <laughs> but in this country, they can't. And this is what brings ministry or the, or the government to force them to do something which is not very pleasant. Now, the doctor's point of view is that even if you post us, we don't know much. What will we do? How much will be useful? They say that you should be, we should be posted when we are postgraduates. Or when we have got an admission into postgraduation. Because our major worries are over. During our internship, during our PG, we, our entire energy is focused on becoming a postgraduate, a specialist. Because that brings certain prestige, that brings money, that gives offers. It gives you opportunities to go abroad make millions, but don't send us as MBBS graduate. And we say that give us one, one year of your life. We say that give one year of your life to the society you belong. This is the minimum you owe to us. So believe me, task is not that easy. It will take some time for us to settle down. We still do not know how to go about it because if you look at the seat matrices of the medical colleges, the primary health centers, there are still states particularly the Northeast, which do not have medical colleges at all, but they have primary health centers. So how do you send people from Karnataka to Northeast? Will it ever happen? It doesn't happen in the village itself. It doesn't happen in the state itself. Then where is the question of sending them from 3,000 kilometers to another place? It won't work. Even if they go there, they will give whatever remuneration is given to the medical officer, mark attendance, and come out. And third problem is that how effective they will be. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we have decided is that it is time for us to look at other options. There's no point in looking at options which is not going to work. The doctor-centric approach has to end. And we are looking at options like middle-level health service providers. We have recently come out with a course called Community Health Officers, CHOs. These are boys and girls who will be picked up from the district will be trained in the district hospitals and will be redeployed in the sub-centers where no doctors are there. There are two states, Chhattisgarh and Assam, who brought out their own laws to provide the middle-level service health providers. Chhattisgarh, initially it was very good. It did made a lot of difference in the ground situation in Chhattisgarh. But very soon it became a big problem because they directly came into conflict with the doctors. And believe me, doctors are very, very strong lobby. I have handled them for a long time. Those who are doctors here will certainly realize. I was health secretary in Kerala. I know the doctors who were close to a particular party next year will come who are closer to the other party too. After all, all of them are their patients. So are we. So are we. The current scenario I have seen, doctors who can do anything to see that they are not disturbed. From the, from the environment in which they are working. I mean, they are also human beings. We too are. So it is fair enough. But the problem is, what do we do about villages where people are largely dependent on quacks? If I fall 